I'd recognize the click of those $400 heels anywhere. What do you want, Gina? I'm here to pick up Brandon. How could you even imagine I'd think about it, let alone Don't plan Don't be it. so jumpy, Sophia. It sounds as though you'd have something to hide. Don't play games with me. Oh, if you think I'm playing games, you're dead wrong. But I am making the rules. And I'm sure you'll find a way to get Cece to give me custody of Brandon. Shh. Because I'd hate to have to tell him you're the one behind the horrible Shut explosion. Shut up, Gina. Don't then get busy, Sophia. Mom! Hi, sweetheart. You all set? I sure am. Great. You know exactly what time he's supposed to be back if he's even one minute late. I know, you'll trouble. have me tarred and feathered. Your father's such a stickler for rules. You do well to remember that, Gina. Oh, how could I forget? Well, it's been fun talking with you, Sophia. I hope we can do it again sometime real soon. Clock's ticking, Brandon. I guess we better go. I'll lead the way, Mom. All right. Why don't you step outside? Okay, I will. I have to figure a way to get her out of the guest house, out of Brandon's life. Oh, it's so good to have you home again, Victoria. Thank you, and it was very sweet of you to invite us to brunch. Oh, nonsense. I wanted to see both of you. And especially you, Victoria. I miss you not being home. You and Chip for my very first Christmas. Uh, yeah, well, we were very sorry that we couldn't be here. Well, I'm sure your mother enjoyed your, your grandson. Uh, yeah, she, I, I didn't, I didn't see rotten, my mother. I, I, I must be confused. I thought... Well, I, I didn't tell Mason where I was going either. I went to a uh, drug rehabilitation center because I was addicted to cocaine. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I had no idea. Well, see, that's the thing. Nobody, nobody knew. That's what happens when you're an addict. You fool people and you use them as well. Um, and Pamela, I owe you an apology because I used you. Me? Yes, remember that $5,000 that I borrowed to pay for the fur jacket? Well, I, uh, I bought cocaine with it. Victoria, I... Mason, it's important that I, that I tell your mother this. I wouldn't be able to do it if I didn't feel I had my life together. Oh, well, it must have been a very difficult time for yes, you. Yes, it was. It was horrifying. And I knew I should have talked to Mason, but I was ashamed and I was afraid. But uh, now that I have my my husband next to me, and I have my family and my friends. There's no reason to resort to drugs anymore. Yeah, well, I, I can understand how difficult it is to overcome a weakness. I, you're very courageous to have done what you did. Thank you. You must be very proud of her, Mason. Well, of course I am. Yes, well, I think I'll, I'll go see how our brunch is coming along. <laughs> Was that necessary, Mason, Victor? I wasn't about to lie to your mother. That's how this whole thing started. I lied to you, I lied to everybody. The more I lied, the more pressure I was under, the more I wanted cocaine. That's not going to happen again. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you, but this is the way that it has to be. I'm not going to lie about my problems anymore. Yes, this is very important. So when Mason comes back, would you please tell him to call me? Thank you. Man doesn't like to be chased. I'm not chasing anybody, Lionel. It's strictly business, and I'm. I'm there's nothing Ooh. going on between us. Did I strike a nerve or what? I'm sorry if I jumped on you. I'm sorry if you got it. Don't apologize. He thinks the lady does protest too much. Please. What? Please not Shakespeare. Mason knows every word the man ever oh. said. What, what happened? I thought that you and Mason. Thought. Had kind of thought. Should we talk about assumptions here for a second? Oh, you sure. know what I learned? Never make them, no matter what somebody says to you, no matter what they do, no matter what you hear, no matter how they look at you in the eye. <laughs> the whole thing has gone to hell. Time is it? I don't know. Oh. Supposed to be back at the shelter about an hour ago. Pass. You know, actually, I was, uh, oh. I was hoping I might be able to borrow you for a little while. Why, what's up? Well, you, you seem to know the ins and outs of this town now, and, well, I was wondering if you might help me with my investigation. Please. 
on something that we didn't come all this way for you to get involved in something that's going to destroy you. You believe this? Not one single new fact on that oil spill, and they still have three front page stories on it. It'll um, <clears throat> bound to die down sooner or later. No, it won't. Not as long as Pamela's stoking the flames with the lies she's spreading. She doesn't use your name directly, does she? No, 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 no. She's much too clever for that. No, I take that back. She's not that clever. She's got Mason there watching every word she makes. Every word she says is calculated to make sure that there's no mistaking that they're talking about me. Well, they're the ones we left with egg on the face when they found her who actually did the bombing because she never worked for me and they can't tie anything to me. The only thing I'm, I'm going to have to deal with right now is this journalistic harassment. I tell you, they really, they really pushed that First Amendment to the nth degree. That, that must be another one. I'll take care of it, darling. Thank you, sweetheart. Hello. We got a coach in. This is Capwell. Who is this? Oh, you know who this is. I'm waiting for my next payment. Have you got my money? Oh. If I give you another $15,000, is that the end? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you and I have a uh, very unique business relationship. Now, maybe I'll just terminate it when I feel like it. Then that's it. That is it. I'm going to the police because I won't be blackmailed. Oh, no. You're not going to go to the police. There's no way you're going to give up that fancy mansion and those pretty clothes and trade it in for a denim dress and an 8 by 10 cell. A lady like you likes to have people come to her. I don't mind that at all. I'll see you soon. Don't you come over here. Just listen to me. Look. I got a piece of Spanish news for you guys. You know who is solving this case? Me. I am solving this case, and I am less than thrilled at being called down to some two-bit office by some dumb broad who is from a second-rate government agency. Darling, don't horn in on my publicity, and I am not impressed by your title, my dear. You probably got it through affirmative action. Lord knows what affirmative action you took to get the job. Hey, the watch place. your mouth around the lady. Drop those balls soon, you're going to get a bill. Such quatch come into this here. I mean, has our government actually hired him to investigate? You know, if you spent a little more time worrying about the investigation and less worrying about who's going to get the publicity, you might get something done. Now, this lady here is working very hard. It's, it's, no, no, no. Wait. No, look, I can take care of it, all right? Okay. You know, I can, I can certainly understand your position, Mr. Timmons, really. You can. Yes. You see, I've encountered it many times before. In fact, the smaller the town, the more limited the perspective of its public officials. You think I have limited perspective? Here, I'll give you perspective. Why don't you just shut up, Mr. Timmons? And you'll be courteous enough to address me as Ms. Bedford. Now, you're supposed to be the district attorney in this town. If you don't start talking and acting like one, I'll yank this case away from you right now and solve it myself. You see, I don't want and I don't need your help. And I'll be damned if I'm going to put up with this attitude you've got. You want the publicity? It's yours. I don't give a damn about it. But if you don't cooperate with me, you're going to be back to convicting jaywalkers and shoplifters. Now, what will it be, Mr. Timmons? Hmm. Yes. You've probably seen the papers. There's, uh... A picture of a man that we think is probably the guy that that set off the bomb, and uh, but we think C.C. Capwell is a suspect. Yes, well, I figured that out from reading the papers too. Well, I think you should focus your investigation on Mr. Capwell. Well, I'll decide where to start, Mr. Timmons, and you can go now. If you come up with anything, anything that even hints at being connected, I want to know about it immediately. I'm really glad that we were uh, able to reach an understanding. Ladies, that was, that was beautiful. I did get a call from an NCA investigator. Did she ask you any questions? No. She requested a meeting. I told her I would talk to you and call her back. Good. We'll put her off as long as we can. 
government likes nothing better than to slap huge fines on oil companies for just this sort of thing. I'm not sure we can absorb that kind of cost at the moment. Well, this woman seemed more interested in the sabotage theory. Well, she may have said that on the phone. I still think it'd be a mistake for us to meet with her just now. There's no point in getting into anything until we have all the facts. But don't you think you should let them know as soon as possible that you're going to cooperate, that you don't have anything to hide? I, I agree with you, Victoria. I mean, there's nothing to hide, Mason. You haven't done anything wrong. Well, that's not quite the point, but I see I'm outvoted at the moment. All right, well, I'll go call the office and see if she's trying to get in touch with me. In the meantime, maybe you two can conspire against me on some other issue, huh? Uh. Victoria, I am so happy you managed to overcome your addiction. And I know you'll be turning to other battles now. Uh, yeah, it's tough to get life going back to normal. Victoria, I'm well aware of your situation, and I just want you to know that I'm on completely on your side. Thank you. But you're going to have to be strong. You're going to have to do something I managed to avoid my entire life. Fight for your husband. And never give up. So you're just giving up, huh? What choice did I have? I feel so stupid I could kick myself. I said that this would never happen again, that I wouldn't let my guard down, but Lionel... It just seems so right. I'm like, it was destined. <laughs> mm. Oh, how corny. It's really what we all want, isn't it? We don't want to just meet the, the nice guy that you meet from the friend of a family or the friend of somebody and have the relationship work out nice and normally and develop nice and normally. We want destiny. We want the complications. We want the impossibilities. Why does that all add up to romance? Well, it always has. Yeah, well, I think it's a little overrated. And I think it's a lie. Because I've seen all the movies, and I, I've read all the books, and all the ingredients for Mason and I are, are, are right there. It's right there to have a happy ending. So what's the problem? Of course, I know the answer to that. The problem is that this is reality. This is real life. And in real life, you don't just walk off into the sunset and get kicked in the butt. I'm sorry. No, really, it's, uh, it's absolutely perfect that this happened because I needed another lesson. I needed to know that I had to close the door, and this time I have closed it. I'm not going to let him hurt me anymore with his indecisions and his split allegiances. Uh, well, I, I think it's really great that you closed the door. You think you'll ever stop loving him? Hello. Uh, yeah, hi, Mason. Uh, well, she just left. Uh, uh, she didn't. What do you want? I'm returning your call. Oh, right. Yes, well, I wanted to talk to you uh, about setting up a meeting with your clients. Uh, remember the Liptons. And I thought that I should find out exactly where their emotions lie before we, uh, yeah, or, or maybe that we could settle this out of court. So, so what do you say? Can you set up a meeting for me? Absolutely not. All right, fine, then. I'll just have to do it on my own because I don't want to do it within the pressures of the courtroom. Julia, if you so much as go near those people, Something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Nothing at all. Yeah, I gave you tickets to all the Dodger games this year. Maybe you can go with me sometimes. Oh, it sounds like fun. So I guess you got everything you wanted for Christmas, huh? Almost. Oh, was there something I forgot? No, it's not your fault. Oh, wait a minute. Is this something your dad didn't get you? What is it? What didn't you get for Christmas that you wanted? I asked for you to be able to see me again. That's very nice, sweetheart. I've been praying every night. I guess God hasn't heard me yet. Oh, yes, he has. Uh, I'm positive he has. Are there any obnoxious children around here? Oh, good. Oh, I didn't miss you. I can't stand the sight. What are you, grown two inches? Really? Yeah. Listen, tell me something. Have you been a horrible child around CC like I told you? Nah, tried it. I guess basically I'm just a good kid. You gotta spend more time with me and your mother. I hope I can. Have you had a good Christmas? Great. I love the video games you got me. Gee, we'll have to play them sometime. Will you do me a favor? I'm a little parched. Will you make Uncle Keithy a drink? Sure. Less vermouth this time. The kid does make the greatest martinis. 
had no idea you got Brandon something for Christmas. Oh, well, you know something? You probably had no idea I threw up New Year's Day, but then you probably don't know a lot of things about me. Now, darling. That's very sweet of you. What? Throwing up? You know what I mean, you jerk. What? Are you... Are you still playing Little Daisy Dark for that kid? Yes. I what? can't let Brandon know that I can see you. Why not? Because he might accidentally say something to see here, Sophia. Eva, I, I love it. I love it. You know, you're still as cutthroat and as two-faced as you ever were. You warm the cockles of my heart. I don't think I know what you mean. Oh, dear, you're still as avaricious, as duplicitous as... You ever were. I mean, those are the hallmarks of our relationship, darling. Here, for you. What's this? It's a bomb. Open it. What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, uh, well, dear, it's, um, it's a little camera, dear. What you're supposed to do with it is you just, like, open it up and take pictures of it. You know what I mean? You walk around the Capwell estate and you take, you take pictures of, well, gee, the dogs, you know. Palm trees, CC talking with criminals, stuff like that. Well, that'd be great if I was 007, but I'm supposed to be blind. Absolutely remember? blind. How are they going to suspect anything? If you're blind, walking around, you take any pictures you want to. The camera's small, you see. They'll never notice it. Also, it takes great pictures. Take a look. Who took that picture of you? Darling, I did it at a 20-second timer. It's just for you. That is disgusting. Well, you can... You can see I did it for you. We wouldn't want to let this get into somebody else's hands, would we? Is there yes. anyone in particular I'm supposed to be looking for? Well, I don't know. I was thinking that if you just saw anybody that you hadn't seen before start snapping pictures, you might get adventurous and, and find uh, Thompson sooner or later. Maybe this will be fun. I can get some candid photos of CeCe and Sophia. I think you've got company. Oh, no. Oh, is that the way you're going to handle this? Just turning your back on me? I don't think this is a good time for us to be Julia, talking Julia, do you always run away from your problems? I'm not running away from anything. You are, if you have to admit that you've been mm. after Mason and you thought you had gotten him while I was in the clinic. I overheard you say that your marriage was over. I made a mistake, and I'm terribly You know, sorry. I said a lot of things in the clinic, Julia, including that I wanted to kill myself. Are you disappointed? If you have managed to... Your drug problem. If I have managed, are you still expecting me to collapse? You know very well that Julia, that's not what I want. I want my mean. marriage to work. I want to make a home for Chip and for Mason. And what you heard in the clinic, you simply wanted to hear. You've been after Mason for months. You decided to go behind my back. Look, it's not going to work. I'm sorry that you hate me so much. I'm really sorry, but I'm at the end of the rope, my rope. So will you just leave me alone? Get you off are, my back. You are pathetic. Do you know that? No. Let me tell you something. All three of us are pathetic, and we are getting exactly what we deserve. No, you're wrong. Mason and I are getting what we want. We are staying together. And if you can't deal with it, just pack your bags and leave. My mother's corporation has no intention of taking the financial responsibility for this spill. I didn't come here to point fingers, Mr. Capwell. I'm merely trying to sort out the facts. Well, in that case, you should talk to C.C. Capwell. He's the man behind this sabotage. Yes, I've read all the newspaper reports, Mrs. Conrad. I'm aware of the accusations you've been making, but I have yet to see any proof. <sighs> well, <laughs> Cece is a master of covering his tracks. Well, I can assure you that I will be talking to everyone with any possibility of connection to this disaster. Well, as far as the financial ramifications of what's happened, our company will not have anything... Mr. Capital, you're awfully quick to try to tell me what your company will and will not do. When my investigation is completed, charges will be filed and fines will be levied. And if they're against your company, you'll pay. Well, we'll see. What I'd like to know is what Kane is doing here. Everyone knows that he's sided with my father. His experience with explosives is also documented. Why are you acting like this, Mason? I'm not siding with anyone. I just want to find who's responsible and make sure they pay for this. Look, that's, that is what we all want. Mrs. Conrad, I'd like access to any records you might have. They've all been turned over to the district attorney. But I'm sure if you have any more questions, my son would be very happy to answer them. Thank you both for being so cooperative. Okay. Don't think that um, we're intimidated just because you're from a government agency. We've faced much tougher challenges. Do you always feel so threatened, Mr. Capwell? 
What do you think, Mason? I think that woman's going to be trouble. Think I'll ever wear this in Santa Barbara? I mean, maybe. Might make a good disguise, I suppose. You know, I wore this the first night we were here. Wish we could turn back the time. If we turn back the time, we'll never get to tomorrow. Every time I see you, you look more beautiful to me. Every time we make love, I learn something about you. So even though I'd like to hold on to some of these moments as they're going by, I think it's a good idea to press on to the future. Just hold me. Tell me this isn't the end of everything. That's the beginning. It's the beginning. scavenger hunt. I've seen the deal here is that you go out and you find everything on a list and you bring it back to Uncle Keithy. And if you do this in 20 minutes, you'll get 20 bucks. What a great game. Are you going to time me? Time you? Oh, yes. Like 10, 9, 8, Wait, 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 seven, wait. Six. Hold the countdown. Brandon, couldn't you read me the list? It's a game. Would you leave the kid alone? I just want to know what's on the list, please. A basketball, a croquet mallet, a tennis racket. Seven, six. No wait, five, no wait, Brandon. Four, the whole six, list. Six, six. Read me the whole list, please. A golf club, a telephone bills from Dad's study, a pair of Sophia silk underwear, and any files in Dad's file cabinet. I began with the don't oil. think we're going to be playing that game right now. Oh, Mom, it sounds so like so fun, Mom. Now look, Brandon, why don't you? Go into the bedroom and find another game for you and Uncle Keith to play. One he'll like, maybe laser tag. Yeah. But I always lose at laser tag. Yeah, well, you're gonna lose real big if you don't quit trying to get my kid to do your dirty work. Oh, well. 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 I guess it was a bad idea. The kid seems to like you a lot. I mean, you're overprotective, but, you know, maybe you should spend some more time with him. I'm working on it. I can't believe Brandon likes you so much. No, what you can't believe is he likes me better than the doctor. That's not true. And he's not going to have to put up with him much longer. Keith, you better not be doing I'm it. not going to be doing anything. You've doomed that relationship yourself. That's a lie. It is not a lie. The only lie is that you can see and you haven't told Scott. And that's just one of a billion lies that you've told that guy. You know, when Scott does finally find out about this, he's going to leave. When he does, give me a call. Hello. So, pretty incredible place, huh? You know, it hasn't changed much at all. What do you mean? You've been here before? Yes. Eden Kappel and I were roommates at boarding school. I came home with her for Thanksgiving once. Wait a minute, are you kidding me? You and Eden are friends? Yeah. Well, I lost touch with her after we graduated, though. Oh, but you're full of surprises. Not really. Good afternoon. Hi, folks. Uh, this is Andrea Bedford. She's with the NCA. Uh-huh. Miss Bedford? I guess you don't remember me? Should I? Thanksgiving. I came home with Eden from boarding school once. Oh, yeah, of course. Now I recognize yeah. your name. Hello. Oh, Hello. my gosh. You're certainly not the same girl with the braces and the, <laughs> the eyeglasses. <laughs> well, I hope not. No, I am all grown up now and working for the government. How is Eden? Uh, she's fine. She should be back from Hawaii any day now. I can't wait to see her. Yeah. Well, I hope we can certainly settle these ridiculous allegations quickly. Well, you know, the charges certainly have been extreme, but everyone at the NCA knows your record at preserving the environment. There's absolutely no suspicion there that you'd commit a crime like this. Good. I'm very glad to hear that. Unfortunately, I'm still going to need to go over all of your records concerning that particular rig. Now, it's strictly routine, but I'd like to make sure that you're protected against charges that might come up later. Miss Bedford, anything you need, you have. Anything I can do to help, believe me. Wonderful. Mrs. K. 
have, Will. Mm -hmm. We'd appreciate any help you could give us as well. Oh, well, certainly. Of course, anything I can do. Well, I'll be in touch, Mr. Capwell. Thank you, Andrew. I'm glad you're handling this mess. Oh, thanks. May take a while, but we'll get who's in charge. We always do. Goodbye, Mrs. Capwell. About goodbye. Bye. Bye. Why are you looking at me like that? You got exactly what you wanted from him in there, and he didn't even know it. He's pretty good at this. I know. I'm just doing my job. Maybe if we sit down over here, it'll be suitable. Then we can discuss some of the things that are going on. Can we have a seat? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Yep. Lipton. Hello. Mr. Capo, we didn't realize you'd be here. Well, Ms. Wainwright didn't want me here because she knows how unethical her behavior is. I spoke to the Liptons about my intentions and they agreed to meet me without having you present. Then you won't mind if I have a word alone with them before you spirit them off. Come this way. Hello, Julia. Hi, Pamela. How are you? I'm well aware that you're creating these business conflicts just to get close to Mason. I'm just doing my job. Then do your job. And stay out of my son's life. Stop trying to ruin his marriage. Now I've brought down your bags, Mr. Castillo. <coughs> oh, thank you, man. I put them on probably right by the door. Are you taking a taxi to the airport or the bus? Uh, I think we'll take a taxi unless, uh... Unless Danny is around. Danny? Uh, yes, he's a driver guide for the hotel. He usually parks to the left of the hotel entrance. Oh, pardon, miss, but the hotel doesn't use driver guides. We find a taxi or licensed tour guide companies to be most reliable for our guests. But oh, he said... Maybe we misunderstood. You know, he might be one of those uh, gypsy drivers. The hotel makes an effort to keep those people away. Yeah, well, he did drive us. <sighs> But it's no big deal, because we're out of here anyway, man. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you. Cruz, I distinctly remember Danny saying he was attached to the hotel. Well, maybe he really wanted our business. I guess we'll never know, darling, because we're about to commit this thing to memory. We're leaving. We're leaving. <laughs> Let's toast it. Okay. To the happy memories in Hawaii. Since my client seemed determined to hear what you have to say, Julia, you'd better get on with it. All right, I realize that this is a rather unorthodox approach, taking the case to the opposing clients. However, I'm sure that you understand how emotionally draining a courtroom battle would be. Now, seven or eight years ago, surrogate mothers were rare. In fact, there weren't any laws in the books about it at all. Now you'll find that there are a lot of women willing to be surrogate mothers. And I'm sure that there are a lot of women who would be willing and suitable to mother a child for you. Unfortunately, I don't think Rita Grant is that person. She didn't realize how emotionally involved this baby would become in her life. And she's been carrying it, and she will carry it until it's born. And I want you to understand the, the kind of emotional investment that that takes. Well, it's no less great than ours. I'm not entirely sure that that's true, Mr. Lipton. Don't tell me, Ms. Wainwright. I mean, we've been trying to have a child for almost six years now. You want to know about emotional investment? Take a look at that. We spent over two years looking for the perfect surrogate. Then it took almost another year before the baby was actually conceived. We've been carrying this baby in our hearts a lot longer than Rita Grant has. If we lose this baby, we won't have another one. You can't expect us to try to find another surrogate after what this woman has put us through. This baby is ours, and we want her very much. They also want what they paid for. No. The money doesn't have anything to do with it. In fact, we thought maybe you were going to ask us for more money today for Ms. Grant, and we're willing to pay that. We just want what's best for the baby. And I resent you calling it her baby. I mean, that child that she's carrying is a part of both of us. And there's no way we're gonna give it up without a fight. Come on, honey, let's go. Hmm. 
maybe now you can have a heart-to-heart -heart with your client and remind her that that baby wasn't immaculately conceived. You and I have no business taking on this case. We can't even manage our own lives. Speak for yourself. We share a daughter together. And we can't even be civil to one another. We don't have the right to pass judgment on anybody. That's the way you feel. Maybe you should drop the case. Not on your life. Security system check, Mrs. Capwell. Wait, you, you have to leave right now. You, you've got to get the whole Santa Barbara police force is looking for They're going to find me. But it would be nice to get out of this town. Well, then get out. Until I get paid. I'll put my neck on the line for you, Mrs. Capwell. And my picture's all over the papers, and that distresses me. And I should be paid for my distress. Now, do you have my 15000 I'm working on it. Well, work faster. you got 24 hours. Say cheese, Sophia. No, you don't have a prayer in this case. The judge is going to see the same tears in Tom's eyes that you saw, and I'm going to win. All you care about, isn't it, is winning. I care about my clients. You don't care about anything, Mason. All you care about is, is satisfying your own needs, whatever those are, I don't know. You have no heart. I have a heart, Julie. I just don't let it get in the way of business. No, I'm not talking about your business. I'm talking about your everyday life. You don't... You treat people like issues, Mason. You know, it doesn't matter if they're your clients or, or, or they're your wives or your lovers. You just discard them when you're tired of them and you want to throw them away. You know that's not true. Yes, it is true. And I'm so damn angry at myself for letting myself be in this situation in the first place. I'm just humiliated. I have been clinging on to you like a fool. And what is there to hang on to? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. You don't give a damn about me. All you care about is that Mason Capwell is not humiliated. Julian, please, Julian. Oh, you're right. I'm losing. Ma I'm losing. Ma Mason. Because I feel out of Julia, control. Julia. You know Mason. it. It's like a feel out of control. Maybe you can go. Maybe you can go. Can go. Yeah. Yeah. Make him go away. I'm starting to feel emotions again, you know, and it feels it feels great. Victoria, that is absolutely wonderful. If, if we can do anything, if you need anything. Oh, I have everything I need. I have Mason and Chip. You know, the worst thing about this whole ordeal is I thought I might lose them. It won't happen. I promise you, it won't happen. Uh, you know, Cece and Mason have had some problems since you've been gone. Yeah, well, that's another reason I came over. Uh, if there's any way that I can help mend the fence, I'd like to. Mason loves his family very much, but sometimes that love is misplaced. I know exactly how misplaced it can be, don't I? Uh, you keep an eye on him, all right? Oh, I'm not letting him out of my sight. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Campbell. Yes, where does Maria? Oh, uh, you wanted me to let you know. Brandon's mother still hasn't brought him back yet. Excuse me. I wonder. Excuse me. Um, would you excuse me? I'll be right back. I think I should go with you. One hour, as promised, Mrs. Capwell. Oh, it's just amazing how fast these places can develop pictures. Here you go. Thank you. What have you got, Mom? Oh, nothing important. Don't start yelling at her because you have to think of Brandon. He'll be right there. I am thinking of Brandon. The woman's a terrible example for the boy. I thought I heard you, too. Is there a problem? You know there is. You're already one hour late. You violated the contract. I I'm sorry. You know, you know, I can't see the clock, Cece. Brandon and I were having so much fun, I guess time got away from me. All right. Come on, Brandon. Well, I, I was hoping maybe he could stay for dinner. Absolutely not. Cece, 
I mean, a child should be allowed to have dinner with his own mother once in a while. Don't you think so, Sophia? Just an hour or two more. Well, yes, it probably wouldn't hurt. I beg your pardon? Would you like to stay, Brandon? Yeah. Okay. I'll settle then. Come on, sweetheart. <laughs> I don't believe this. Well, it's a very good start, Sophia. You're on the right track. Could you let that woman talk you into keeping him? You know she pushes everything to the limit. You don't want Brandon spending any more time with her than I do. Well, actually, um, I've, been, I've been giving this a lot of thought. And uh, maybe Brandon belongs with Gina. Well, I've heard it all. Have you lost your mind? A child needs their mother. I, I, uh, after everything Victoria said today, I got to thinking that, that Gina is the only mother that Brandon has known. I thought... You have always considered Brandon to be one of your own. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, I, I have. I, I did. Now, what the hell is this all about? Tell me, what is it? Cece, I don't know. It's just something I was thinking about. It's an idea, that's all. Take that idea and bury it. Because it's never going to happen. seen anything. Have you tried the camera yet? No, I mean, there's nothing to take a picture of. Well, we can remedy that situation. It has a timer on it, you know, we can mount it above the bed. Okay, oh, come would on. you not Maybe be disgusting in front of Brandon? He could wake up. He'd sleep through the second coming. Come on, we'll be real quiet. Pick up where we left off all those months ago. I'll get my red heels and my black mesh stockings. <laughs> no, 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 no. some friendly bubbles to make you feel friendly. Here. Thank you. I'd like to propose a toast. I'd like to make a toast. Yeah, this has been a real red letter day. Well, that's exactly why I'd like to make a toast. To a new beginning. To a new beginning. Cheers. 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 B, no smoking. You may lord now, if you wish. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Will you take that baby's hand? A leaf for the lady, sir? And yourself, to make sure you will return to the islands. Oh, watch the lucky tourists as their wallets get lighter. How much are they, man? 250. Got a five there. We'll have the ones on the end here. That'll be convenient. Mahalo. Mahalo. Which one would you like? Oh, I'll take the yellow one. Okay, here's the, here's the yellow one. Mm. Aloha. Aloha yourself. Bruce. Thank God, I thought I'd missed your flight. Hi, Richard. Uh, God, I've seen a lot of you lately. This is my fiance, Eden Capwell. How do you do? Pleasure, Miss Capwell. I just wanted to say we're counting on you to deliver. Yes, well, I think you've made that sufficiently clear. You know, in these matters, you're on your own, but the firm has absolute faith in your ability. I assume that's why the firm asked me to do this. Uh, that's our flight. Uh, we'll have to go. Yeah, maybe. You know what, man? 
You worry too much. Now I see why you said the operation was a great success. Mr. Castillo gives off a strong signal. Yes. Now we'll be able to track him wherever he is. Land or sea or air. Even the grave. See nightly news with Tom Brokaw. A killer storm blankets the south and the east, clogging roads and shutting down businesses, schools, and government. We'll have the latest.